So in this video, we're going to find the radius of convergence R for the given series. So the series here is going from 1 to infinity. We have n squared times x to the n over here in the denominator. I'm just going to write it out, and I'll explain what this essentially means. Before I explain what it means, just try to think about it for a second. It should make sense, because look at this. We're going from 1. We're starting at 1. We're going, you know, to infinity. And as we go, as we start with n equals 1, we get 8 times 1. This is what that is. And then we go to n equals 2, we have 8 times 2. And we keep on doing that. So this is 8 times 3. And then we keep on doing that to get to 8 times n. That's essentially our last term, I guess you could think about it, our last, uh, last term in the denominator that we're multiplying by. So that's what that represents, the denominator. It's kind of a weird concept. Um, it's not it's not something you'd see most of the time. Most of the time, you just real, see a regular power series written out, and you you find the radius of convergence. But here, it's a little different. But it's not it's not going to be any different in the way you calculate it. Let's go ahead and find the ratio. Use the ratio test for this one. So we can use the ratio test, which is something we oftentimes use for the radius of convergence. And there's three potential um, outcomes that can happen. So we can take the limit as n goes to infinity of our um, of our series. So instead of um, instead of just doing a sub n, we have a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n, which is what we do for the ratio test. If this is less than 1, then our series, our series is absolutely convergent. So a series is absolutely convergent. Absolutely convergent basically means it's like more firmly convergent than just conditionally convergent, for example. Uh, that's what it means. It's just a I guess like a a more firm way, a, a more firm type of convergence. That's what absolutely convergent means. So, yeah. But this test can be used for that. So if it's good, if it's less than one, it's absolutely convergent. If if the same thing ends up becoming ends up being greater than one, then we are divergent. We are divergent. And finally, finally. If our limit as n approaches to infinity of this stuff is equal to 1, we are inconclusive. We cannot make inconclusive. We cannot make a conclusion about, the, uh, about our convergence or divergence based on the ratio test if we get an inconclusive result. So let's use this. How are we going to use this? Well, basically, we're going we're gonna to treat this just like what we do here, and we're basically going to write this as a sub n plus 1 is going to be n plus 1 squared times x raised to the n plus 1 divided by, and then we have our 8, 16, 24, dot, dot, dot. We have 8n, and then we do uh, multiply by 8 times n plus 1. Make sure you put that n plus 1 in parentheses. Do not distribute right now because it's going to cancel uh, later. It's going to be a nice cancellation. I usually don't like to distribute until the end because distribu distributing is not hard, but it's oftentimes beneficial not to do it. So just don't do it and do it at the end if you have to. So this is 8n, and then I'll make these a little bigger. So this is what you have for your limit. It's kind of nasty at the moment, but if you try to use your algebra, you can try and you can try and write this as um, multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be times x to the n times x. That's what we have because it's x to the n plus 1. So we can write it out like that. And then divide by 8 times 16, 24, dot, 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 8n. Again, 8n plus 1, 8 times n plus 1. And then multi multiply this. Multiply this by the reciprocal, which is here, 8 times 16, 24 dot 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 8n divided by n squared times x to the n power. Cancellation time. So x to the n's will cancel. And then these will cancel, which is actually the most exciting part because we don't want that. And then we have, uh, well, this is essentially what's going to cancel. It's, oh, this is also going to cancel. Sorry, not the whole thing. This is going to cancel with this, but we'll do that later just so we can avoid confusion. This is going to be the limit as n approaches to infinity. We have, I need the absolute value. The reason why is because the n's, they might be positive, but the x can be negative, and so we still need it. 
what we can do is we can bring the ends out of our absolute value, which is what we're going to do next. So here we have our n plus 1 squared, and then we have our x. So that's all that, that we have, right? That's it on the numerator. And then divide by, the only thing that's left here is uh, two things, is 8 times n plus 1, and then this stuff, and then times n squared. So this and this is, we dealt with everything. Just make sure you dealt with all the terms. Okay, so this is, this gets you to what? We can take your um, n plus 1 squared here and your n plus 1 in the denominator, and we can cancel stuff. Let's do that. This is gone. This is gone, essentially. Um, okay, so let's see here. Okay, so this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity. We can take our n plus 1 on the top and then our n squared on the bottom, even the 8 actually, we can take out of the absolute value, so all positive, so we got all of this out of the absolute value, and then we take our absolute value of x. So that's good, because the reason why we did that is because this stuff, the limit as we go to infinity, this stuff is going to approach, as you can as you can imagine, this stuff is going up at a faster rate, right, because it's n squared, and this stuff is going slower than this, so it's going to be approaching 0 essentially. And so all of this is just approaching zero, which means that the whole thing, really, if we look at the limit, is approaching zero. What does that tell you about this? Well, since this is all approaching zero, and zero is always less than one, which is true, this means that for any value of x, we will get convergence. That's, that's what we're saying. So any value of x is actually just going to give us not just a convergence, but absolute convergence. We're going to get absolutely convergent um, series for any value of x that we plug in. So your interval of convergence, if you wanted to write this out, interval of convergence, convergence is from negative infinity to infinity, which indicates that, of course, your radius of convergence, which is essentially half of that radius of convergence, whoops, your radius of convergence is infinity. It's an infinite radius. And of course, um, we could have we could determine our center by looking at the fact that this is just an x here. And if it was like x minus 2 raised to the n, then your center would be 2. So this is just x raised to the n or x minus 0 raised to the n, so 0 is your center. So your radius of convergence is infinite. And this is your interval if you were asked, which in this problem you are not. I believe you are not. So your radius of convergence is infinite. That's it.